And welcome inside the Backstage Pass. It is a Monday, and hard to believe me saying this, August the 1st of 2022. I do not know where time has gone with half the year being over now, only a few months left here in uh, the good Lord's year 2022. Back here on the Backstage Pass, presented by our friends over at Bangtail Whiskey, MitchMax.com, and of course, Hank Jr. Productions live on the YouTube channel, and of course, at the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Uh, Pleased to welcome in. I'll tell you what, she's got an uh, attitude toward the music, which is great. Uh, she's fearless and uh, definitely one of the hottest artists rising in country music right now. Miss Priscilla Block joins us here on the show. Priscilla, how you doing? I am good. Just hanging out. You know, it is kind of crazy when you say like the year is, I cannot believe we're already in August. <laughs> where, where has time gone? Oh, no, I have no idea where it's gone. Uh, well, i tell you what, for you, it's gone straight up to the moon. And then some, uh, since we last talked on the audio side, uh, back a couple of years ago. Just tell me what this ride has been like. I mean, the, the major record deal, the the album, Welcome to the Block Party, the tour. My God, give us an update as much as out there because you've really, like I said, you've shot off to the moon and you, like you stayed up there. You took a nice vacation and you're still on top right now of your game. What's going on? Thank you. It has been, um, you know, just a whirlwind, honestly. I mean, um, you know, I moved out to Nashville eight years ago and just kind of did the whole thing. Like, you know, you you play the bars, you write songs, you network, you do literally whatever you can to try and get there and you hope it happens. And 2020 was kind of when it all changed for me. And it was just like, one second, like I felt like nobody knew who I was. And the next we have like everybody calling and they're like, who's this girl? And I had my first single at radio and that's just been nuts. I got to record, um, you know, Welcome to the Block Party, which some of those songs I wrote years ago. And it's just been cool to, um, you know, bring those songs to life. And it's, it's kind of weird when you show up to places and people actually know your songs now, you know what I mean? I'm not singing wagon wheel a million times. <laughs> I love that. And I know, like I said, it's been that buzz over the past couple of years, but tell people kind of how one song can, can change your life. And what I mean by this is there was one that definitely caught my attention and a good friend of ours, good friends of the program here, tremendous songwriter, good friend of yours, Sarah Jones, you guys put together a great song, uh, thick thighs. Tell me about this because that really came out and caught just music in general, a lot of fans, country music fans in general. And it was uh, just a great country song, well-written, and it had a great response for you too in your camp. Yeah, it was kind of wild. So when we wrote that song, I mean, I, I wrote it years ago, pre-record deal, the whole thing. And it kind of started out as this joke. Like we were like, <laughs> I didn't want to write a heartbreak song that day. And, you know, Thick Thighs kind of got tossed out. And um, my co-writers, Sarah Jones included, mm -hmm. Um, she was like, were you serious when you just said thick thighs or was that? And, <laughs> and, um, she was like, I, you know, I, I really think that we should write that song. And it was crazy because it was all fun when we wrote it and we were just throwing out funny things and talking about being a curvy girl. And I had no clue that that song was going to become like such a massive staple for me. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, when we wrote it, we were like, all right, this is really cool. Like this, this might go viral. I didn't know what viral meant at the time. <laughs> But I remember feeling like it was super special. We played it one time live downtown in Nashville. And it was like one of the first responses that I've ever had that like the room like erupted and everyone's like freaking out, screaming. And um, it, it's it's kind of crazy because so many people have sent me their stories about that song and just how much like it's helped them love themselves, their bodies, their like all of that. Mm -hmm. Which is good there because everybody has to feel something about themselves that they enjoy. Otherwise, nobody else will. You got to love yourself. And I think that's what the, the song made. Just everybody kind of kind of feel something out there is you don't have to be perfect or have to be a celebrity model or something like that. You be you and be true to yourself. And, and that's what, to me, the, the song defined. And that's what this album has done, too, for you guys. I kind of was describing it to you before we went live as kind of that 90s country sound, three chords and the truth. You went back and did something very special. Tell people about this this album, Welcome to the Block Party, and just how special uh, this was. Like you said, a lot of the songs were written in, in previous years, but there, there's something on there for everybody if they have not uh, listened to it yet. Yeah, I think this song kind of just takes you through this journey. Um, you know, all, all of the songs I wrote from a real place, and um, there's songs that will make you laugh. There's songs that will make you cry. There's songs that, songs that will make you want to go party. Like, it's kind of <laughs> just got the whole thing. And, um, you know, it – this this is my first album out in the world really and um it's really really special to me i feel like 
you get to know me when you listen to this album and um, I'm a hot mess. And there is like a bunch of hot messness on, on the project. Um, but just the response, everything has just been so special. And, you know, what better name to title it than welcome to the block party. It's like, here I am. I'm coming, like, I'm here for all of y'all. And there's a lot going on here and there's a lot going on in the album. <laughs> Well, I love that story too, because uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, you know, growing up there and wanting to get to Nashville. And uh, I, I, this the story you told me last time, you found a guitar in an attic and always wanted to, I know, take up that and, and you auditioned for all these different singing shows and competitions that were out there. And But you kind of had your mind made up from a young age that this was going to be the career and you kind of wanted to get out and get to Nashville pretty quick, didn't you? I did. I started writing. Um, that's so cool that you remember that. Yeah, I, I found a guitar in my attic and um, I started on piano. So somehow I was able to pick up the guitar and start teaching myself and learning. OK, I mean, I, speaking of three chords and the truth, I don't know much more than that. OK, <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it kind of started there. And I was I love I love Taylor Swift and I, mm -hmm. I would play all these Taylor Swift songs and like, man, like maybe I could start writing my own. And I just started writing about my life and, you know, those years of high school. And um, I remember like after writing my first song, I was like, wait, like I could maybe do this, like mm -hmm. write songs and have a career in, in country music. And it just seemed like such a far-fetched dream, but I really started like studying up on people that have done this, including Taylor Swift, like how in the world, okay, she went to Nashville. Okay. I'm asking my dad, can you bring me to Nashville? Like, what can we do to like, kind of give this thing a shot? And, um, I realized like there was really nothing else that I wanted to do. And so when I was out of high school, I mean, I pedal to the metal, we are going like hit the road, packed all of my stuff into my car that was falling apart and like did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's one of those stories that will live on for, for a long time, no doubt. And uh, tell people about this because getting, uh, we've talked about thick thighs enough, but getting there and then also the the blood, sweat, the tears. I know you're working, uh, I believe, at a yogurt shop for a while. You were doing some writer's rounds, things like that. Man, it's my memory's on today. It's just, it's all It's point, really which good. Is good. <laughs> but it's so just, better than mine. I don't well, even know. You know. <laughs> I know what it was. I gave up drinking. That's what it not gave up. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. Maybe it's that's what I need to do. <laughs> But tell people about just the fact that, you know, kind of where you were, all the blood, sweat and and, and just the, the the grinding and everything that you had to put together for those writers rounds, working a, a job that you had to make money for and be able to, to pay for these records and pay for this music. Just the grind itself and kind of take people on that walk and then to get the call to, to the, the immaculate call, what I say, to get that record deal. And then all that hard work had to just feel like, you know what? That really paid off the day I put my name and I signed that piece of paper and I got the record deal with Universal. Walk people through that path and how that felt when you got the call that day. Um, it was the craziest day of my life. Um, it was a, a, just a weird time. Like, to be honest, I, I think that people expect the story to be like it was like a fairy tale, like day of like I'm getting married. And like it, <laughs> it, it literally scared the shit out of me. <laughs> And I remember, you know, I, and I, it's a good thing. Like when I was younger and when I was researching on artists that did it, the do's and the don'ts, like, honestly, like I just never wanted to be a girl that like signed the wrong deal or like, you know, wasn't smart with business or whatever it was. And so the day when it, like that day, just about over you sitting number one on all the charts, like sitting right next to Nicki Minaj, Harry mm -hmm. Styles, like, who is this girl? My phone is ringing off the hook from like every single label in town. And it was like, I mean, I just felt like the world was just like, it was amazing because this is everything that I had dreamed of, but it was scary. It was so scary. I was like, you know, are people just going to be interested in one song that I have? And they're like, you know, this is it. Let's do this. I'm like, I don't want to talk about that song. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about all the songs that I've been spending years <laughs> and years writing. Like, that's what I want. I want to talk about a career, not a one song thing. And so anyways, when I sat down with Universal, um, it was just, I don't know. It was kind of one of those things that you just know when you know. Yeah. And I met with so many amazing people and awesome labels. And um, 
it was a conversation like, Hey, what else do you have? Like, and I'm like, Oh, I got this song called my bar. Like, let me play it. I, I got this song called thick thighs. And they were like, mm -hmm. Holy crap. And I, I felt like it, it really excited me because I, I think that they saw the bigger picture in it. Yeah. Well, and it was it was amazing. Like once the paper was signed, and I'm sure that they they were freaking out. Like, is she gonna is she gonna like get cold feet and not do this? <laughs> um, but it was it was a very there was a lot going on, big whirlwind. But mm -hmm. all in all, I'm really I'm happy. You know, uh, you should be no doubt. The success is definitely uh, paid off. You're such a hard worker, great songwriter, and and I you know one of your good friends. I'm good friends with too. Uh, I know roommate uh, there at the time. Uh, talk about Sarah Jones and just the impact she's made on you as a singer songwriter too. Well, Sarah Jones is like one of my best friends. Um, we grew up together in North Carolina. Long story short, we end up in Nashville together. We didn't even like know each other super well growing up, but. Um, you know, she came out to Nashville to write songs and I wanted to be an artist and we just started like kind of collabing. We were roommates for a long time and we didn't even know what co-writing really was, but we would sit down on our empty apartment floor mm -hmm. and start writing songs together. And she'd be singing harmony with me. And, you know, like that relationship is so special for many reasons, but I think that Sarah really like pushed me to become the artist that I am. I mean, she looked at me one day and she was like, what are you like, what are you doing? What do you want to do? And I'm like, I want to be an artist. And she was like, Priscilla, you need to learn how to perform. Like yeah. put that, put that guitar down. And I was sitting there like, you know, like <laughs> young Taylor Swift with my guitar. And, and she was like, let me play guitar for you. And so um, she started playing. I put my guitar down for almost a year and just started learning how to perform. And, um, so anyway, we still write songs and, you know, she has a lot of the cuts on the album, which is really special. And we both had our first song ever at country radio together, which is really special. Amazing. Great friendship. No doubt. Well, let's talk about the latest single, uh, my bar, which is impacting out there. Of course, the uh, album, welcome to the block parties out there. Again, Priscilla block here on the backstage pass, uh, man, it just, again, one of those songs that takes me back. Like you said, three chords and the truth. And the fact is you can step in and, and I used to honky tonk. We all did back in our younger days and still today I do it too with, with the shows we get to go out and attend with a, such great artists as yourself and you know, getting in there. We used to have the old people don't remember the jukebox days. I'm probably showing my age there, but we'd go and put the quarter in F5, D2, whatever <laughs> we want to do. And that was cool because it reminds me of a great jukebox song that you would go over there, put in a set playlist, get on the dance floor, have your significant other out there or whoever at the time, like I said, your, your partner, whatever, and just enjoy a good old country song. And you guys have done that with my bar kind of tell people about the writing and walk them through the, the production. And of course you guys putting together a hell of a single. Thank you. It was, I love like my bar is one of my favorite songs. I mean, we wrote it years ago, again, pre-record deal, the whole thing. And I remember thinking like, this song is special. Like there is something different about this. It's really freaking cool. Everyone's got their bar. Like I, I just hadn't heard it yet. You know, I felt like it was just something new and fresh. And um, obviously nothing was kind of happening with my career at that point. And I remember thinking, I'm like, maybe I can find a guy to sing the song. <laughs> like every dude's got their bar. Like we just need like somebody to take this thing. Cause I think it's a hit. And um, when I signed my deal, that was one of those songs. I was like, I, I have this song called My Bar. And I sang it and they were like, wait, what? Like, <laughs> this is so cool. And I think it is really cool hearing a girl say like, this is my bar. Mm -hmm. um, and the response has been awesome. We are in the top 40 on country right. radio. <laughs> so it's just like, it's cool. It's so fun to play live. Like, I feel like it's just people's like bar anthem. It, it it's become my anthem now when I jog to you out there when I'm running or doing some of the workout stuff. It's always on the uh, the playlist. And my little girl Priscilla, she loves it too as well. She can actually say my bar, even though I probably should never say you know bar or whatever. You but she'll be I two and a half it. in October, and she can say daddy my bar. She can say those three words. She'll be two and a half, like I said, in October, and she loves your music too. I'll tell you another one. Uh, you guys did a great uh, version of Thick Thighs on there for people that haven't heard the album. One that I, I love so much was uh, was uh, Heels in Hand. Tell me about that one a little bit. Thank you. Um, Heels in Hand is just another, like, I, another song when we wrote it, I was like, this is really freaking cool. Um, I had that title in my phone for a long time. I didn't know what it was going to be. It was just mm -hmm. Heels in Hand. 
And it's cool because like everybody that knows me, like I wear these like chunky heels all the time. <laughs> like I, I don't, they're my running shoes. I don't even have flat shoes. I I'm always in like thick heels. <laughs> and, um, anyway, we, we went in the room and I was like, man, I want, I want this song to drive. And mm -hmm. we had a track guy and he was like playing some cool stuff. And, um, it's just like, I feel like it's such a me song when you listen to it. It's like that. That's me. <laughs> I loved it. No, great song here. We'll take a quick time out. More to come here with uh, Priscilla Block. You can check her out, PriscillaBlock.com. And welcome to the Block Parties out there across all the digital platforms. Make sure you guys go check that out. It is the Backstage Pass live on the YouTube channel. And, of course, at the uh, Sports Guys uh, podcast.com. Always live there for any interviews that you may have missed uh, throughout the week. A word from our sponsors coming right back. More with Priscilla Block here on the show. Stay tuned. The bang tail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune into the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... And back here with Priscilla Block on the show again. It is the Backstage Passing, and thanks to all the work our sponsors do out there to keep us on the air, too. I want to ask you about this song. Let's, let's take a little step back. I love this one so much. Um, just a song that really, I know, changed you and probably changed your life, one called Just About Over You. Tell people about this because it's such a special song for me and for all the fans out there. And uh, this was actually a social media project that was funded. Tell people about this. Yes. Yeah, so uh, just about over you was kind of the song that did it. And um, it's, it's really crazy because everyone always told me that there was going to be a song that did it. And I, I did not I mean, I was writing constantly just trying to find, find what that song was. Like I thought thick thighs was going to do it. You know what I mean? Cause I had written thick thighs before that. And um, I actually had COVID when I wrote just about over you. I was like sick. Mm -hmm. Sarah calls me, my life's falling apart, I'm four months behind on my rent. I ended up moving into this like little shack in Nashville, didn't even have AC. Like wow. she calls me and she's like, Hey, we were supposed to write today. Did you still want to write? And I'm like, I'm, my life is crumbling right now. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know what's happening. The world shut down. <laughs> like what is going, am I going to be able to do music? What have I, like, I've worked so hard to get here and here we are and whatever. So I decide to hop on FaceTime with her and Emily Kroll. And we wrote that song that day. And it was again, like I wrote it and I was just like, okay, this is really, really cool. Mm -hmm. And I decided to post a clip on TikTok of me singing it and um, had no clue, like no clue this song was going to do what it did. I mean, it actually like, blew blew up online and i hit that word annoys me because i feel like people say it all the time and i'm you know you see stuff where people like blow stuff like i didn't even know i didn't know what was happening like mm -hmm. 
I had had followers on TikTok, but like this song just started like, I mean, I'm getting on my phone. I'm having tens of thousands of new followers, new people begging me. We need this song. How do I find this song? And I'm like, I recorded it yesterday. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> and um, anyway, there was this girl, Samantha, she lives in California and basically just like did this call to action on TikTok and was like, we want this song. Like, let's help Priscilla do it. <laughs> and literally just like fans all over came together and helped me go into the studio to record it. And I mean, it's just like forever something that I'm just so thankful for. And um, I don't even think like a lot of people didn't even know where I was at in my life at that point. Mm -hmm. And it's just so cool when you see, you know, a lot of people are like social media can't like, sometimes it's not a great thing, but like that was like that people just believe in other humans and want to help. And it was just it's so special. And it's crazy that that's the song that kind of kind of did it for me. And I think, um, you know, when when the industry kind of saw this independent girl, you know, coming up and it was like the fans were kind of there and like like fans invested in a lot of different ways. It was it was really cool. It was like I felt like this is all of our thing. You know what I mean? This wasn't just me signing a record deal. Like this is like all of the fans were that, that were a part of this with me. Well, it, it goes to show. And of course, all the hard work and I always say many people know hard work pays off and you've, you've definitely uh, done all the, the grunt stuff out there. And like I said, risen uh, to the top and, and well-deserved this, this album, uh, welcome to the block party. Another fantastic song you guys had on there was uh, no working with Hillary Lindsay. Uh, one called I Know a Girl, kind of tell people about that one too, because that uh, that made the album and I'm glad it did. <laughs> <laughs> I love this song. Um, I love Hillary Lindsay. I also wrote it with David Garcia, um, just two insane writers. Um, yeah, this song is just really special. It's about just kind of navigating your way through life and you go through things where you're just like, how am I going to get through this? And then somehow you do. And it's like this push and pull of life all the time. And you you get past certain things that you you, you kind of wish were over. And then you look back and you're like, man, I kind of wish I would go back to that. It's like just this whole nostalgic song and having Hillary on it singing, you know, was just made like it made the song perfect. It was like the older sister talking to my younger self <laughs> of being like, hey, girl, like you can get through whatever you put your mind your mind to you know throughout this journey i want to ask you there's been all those trials and tribulations we had talked about what's been the the most i guess the most challenging part of like you said going through all those ups and downs rising to the top uh what's kind of the biggest i guess path you had to overcome or the biggest challenge on the way to to getting the record deal i i don't know i feel like i'm i'm learning every single day like this is not it's so rewarding and amazing. And there's just like, you know, you zoom out and you're like, holy crap, this is my life. It's mm -hmm. insane. But I think it's just navigating like your yeses and your noes sometimes. Like I've wanted this so bad for so long and I can run myself into the ground. <laughs> like I'm saying yes to every, like, yes, 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 yes. And then I'm like, I start feeling like I'm going crazy. And it's like, <laughs> girl, you probably are because maybe you should just chill for a second. <laughs> so I think that like that has definitely kind of been the hardest thing for me because I, I do want it so bad. And I know that somebody else would work harder if I don't, you know what I mean? So it's just figuring out that balance has, has probably been the hardest thing. What's it been like to see this latest round of artists, uh, Carly Pierce, Ashley McBride, all these great uh, young stars out there going through Lindsay L. Laney Wilson, just take this ride and really change the landscape of the female artist, or as we know, the female artists here in the country music industry, what's that meant for you to see those artists out there along with yourself having success too? It's awesome. I I just think that there's so many amazing women right now in country music that are just like doing their thing. And I'm such a fan of all of these girls. And it's just so cool to kind of be amongst them and learn from them and support each other and just be like, yo, like also there's room. There's room for everyone. You know what I mean? And I love that.
that's a great, great way to put it right there too, is everybody. And there's going to be more and more that come down the pike uh, to later on the next four to five to 10 years. Uh, y'all put another great song on welcome to the block party too, as well called uh, wish you were the whiskey. And I think that was one of the ones that I enjoyed uh, listening to kind of tell people a little bit of the backstory of that one. One of my favorite songs that, that I've ever written. Um, it it's just a drivey song. Like I, I tend to, I think, pull from songs that when I wrote, I'm like, maybe a guy could sing. I don't know why I, why I tend to go there, but wish you were the whiskey was a song that we wrote years ago and nothing was like happening with me. Um, and I remember thinking like, maybe we could write a song for somebody else mm -hmm. and like totally had Jason Aldean in mind when I wrote the song. Like, I'm like, if I could just get him to hear it, like, I really think he would dig this. It's just kind of like his vibe of a song. Yeah. And um, anyway, just, I don't know. I mean, I, I love it. I think it's just kind of a banger. And um, <laughs> when we were going in to record the project, I was like, this song like hits. And mm -hmm. it's just been one of my favorite. It, it goes over so well live. Like people, it's another staple song for me. It, it, it definitely is. Like I said, it goes over well with me, no doubt, too. And I love that you guys finished the album and started it the right way, leading into my bar. And then, of course, uh, the uh, last one, Peaked in High School. Now, this is something that you can go back and have a lot of fun with, too, with a lot of people that remember those stories or had those type of <laughs> high school relationships. Uh, tell folks about that one, too, because it's, again, such a, a <laughs> banger of a song, but also a lot of fun in that tune, too, right? Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, Peaked in High School high school is just kind of like, I mean, what you hear is what you get. Like it is just flat out there. Like to anybody that ever made me feel bad about myself, like this one's for you. And it is like to, to anybody that just, you know, doubted me along the way. It's, I mean, the last line is to all the girls who made me cry. Thank you for being here tonight. And it's like, I see you. Thank you. But also I haven't forgotten. <laughs> Tell me about the tour. I know, like I said, you guys are having a, a great response with it now that Welcome to the Block Party tour. Uh, I've seen a lot of the photos out there, a lot of the cool things going on, some more stops I know coming up here in 2022. How fun's the tour been? And just how much fun has it been to be back on stage? Oh my gosh. I'm obsessed. I love, like, I love being on the road. I love performing. I mean, performing is like my favorite thing ever. Like I just, mm -hmm. I feel like I turn into a whole just new person up on stage. I don't know. I'm like, I got freaking <laughs> like turbo jets on or something. I don't even know. But I, um, I mean, the response to, to the tour was unbelievable. We were out in the spring and like mm -hmm. most of all the dates were sold out. Wow. Um, you have people showing up like with their hair up, their hoops on, their block party homemade shirts. Like it is the coolest thing ever and singing every single song. It, it's just like, and that that doesn't happen a lot. Like I, I know that. So it's just every single show, I'm just so thankful for it. We decided to extend the tour into the fall um, just because it's, I, why not? Why not? <laughs> so, added 20, 20 dates to the fall. Um, and we're going to go out and do it again and just like keep building that, mm -hmm. that hard ticket. And that I want, I want to be in stadiums one day with all these fans that have made it happen. Like, like all of us together, like just doing it, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So it's really cool. It's, it's nice that I, I get to play like all of my songs and, and it's kind of just, like my show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'll say this. I was saying there, and she will be in stadiums one day. I made that prediction a couple of years ago about her getting a record deal, wanted to be one of the best breakout artists out there and fast rising artists. So that came true on the show. People have messaged me back ever since Aww. that day they listened to the show. And I was like, yeah, you, you kind of know how to make Brandon, you make predictions on this show. And more times than not, they do come true. And like I said, she will be doing stadiums one day and headlining her tour out there with Bridgestone and some of the major, major arenas out there tour. Well, I'll tell you what, I love the fact that the album is fantastic and definitely I got to get to a little rapid fire here because I know people that tune into the program love this segment of the show. So it kind of catches you up on, you know, what's been going on lately from a personal standpoint. All right. Outside of music, what's your type of fun? What do you enjoy doing for, for hobbies? I love being on the water. So okay. anything on, on a boat, on a kayak, on a paddleboard, <laughs> just put me on the water. I'm good. <laughs> Freshwater, saltwater does not matter. Beach yeah. or river or whatever does not matter. <laughs> All right. Uh, is there a favorite 
sports, favorite team to root for, college pro, anything like that that you kind of dive into every once in a while? Oh, my God. I don't go into sports, okay? <laughs> I watch it and I drink beer and here we are. We're good. That counts. It counts. And I, the side behind you, they just gave it away right there. So, Bush Light, we just <laughs> give a props right there, too. Hey, that's the best part of watching sports is just watch it with a friend, drink some beers, give your opinion on it for the time you're watching it, and then, like I said, erase it. Uh, from your memory too. All right, uh, food craving, uh, drink craving lately. What's it been? Oh my god, I just all the carbs. Like I don't know what's. I mean, I crave pizza like every single day. It's so bad, yeah. but it's just like it's good. I mean, the Taco Bell pizza, <laughs> like that, that kind of be hitting a little bit different. I have not. I've not tried that one. I've got to to see how that tastes. I've not tried that pizza. Now, mine's been like the the Papa John's or something like that, or the the. Uh, there's another one here called uh, Pizza Inn that does like a, a breakfast pizza. They have boudin on it, sausage, egg. They put it all together like a breakfast pizza. So it would it would go right up our, oh our alley with, with being pizza pizza fans too. Mm -hmm. All right, tell me kind of what, what's left of this year. Obviously, the album is hot right now. The song, the tour, everything's out there. What's kind of next for Priscilla Block as we close 2022 or the back half of this year? Well, um, I'm putting out a new song on Friday called okay. Off the Deep End. It is just, you know, a, <laughs> I think it's a great way to end the summer. It's just like kind of wild and fun. And um, so we're going to do that. Obviously the tour. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I'm working on new music always and I'm ready to, ready to keep putting out some some songs she she will do that august 5th it comes out this friday off the deep end looking forward to that one too which is uh going to be another great pursuit priscilla block song get to add to the the playlist and to the workout list as well hey always appreciate you stopping by uh just congratulate congratulations on all the success the story is fantastic uh all the highs the lows the ups and downs it definitely has paid off you deserve everything you have gotten and then some from the record deal on uh, i always appreciate you making a part of the program giving some time and talking about your music and uh, the one, the only Priscilla Block. We appreciate the time. And hey, you come back again anytime. Thank you so much. I hope that you have a great day. <laughs> we sure will. Priscilla <laughs> Block, it is the Backstage Pass. We'll see you guys uh, coming up this week on Wednesday for another episode. Until then, have a great, great evening.